Hi, welcome to Veggie 360, where you're going to learn how to grow great tasting veggies year round in small spaces. Today's video is part of a fall gardening series. If you happen to miss any of the previous videos in this series, not a problem. Just click on the link in the video description below and you'll be able to catch up. So, how would you like to learn how to extend your garden season? Maybe you've got some summer crops that you would like to keep going a little bit longer. You put a lot of energy and time into growing a summer garden and you just want to get a few more harvests. Or it could be that your fall garden is in full swing and you'd like to overwinter these vegetables so that you'll be able to harvest fresh veggies all winter long. Well, regardless of your goal, whether it is to extend the season for the warm weather crops or overwinter your fall crops, there's methods that you can use that will help you do just that. You have several options available for extending your growing season. These options differ in cost, complexity, as well as the level of protection that they offer your plants. It can be as simple and basic as a bed sheet that you throw over your plants the night before first frost. If you want to step it up a bit, row cover, which is a lightweight synthetic fabric that you can use to cover your plants. Put hoops underneath this row cover and you have a low tunnel or mini hoop house. If you want even more frost protection, I recommend using a cold frame. If you have a lot of plants though that you need to cover, then a high tunnel or hoop house is a great option. The Cadillac of frost protection or winter growing though is the greenhouse. This can be either heated or unheated. Today we're going to be focusing on low tunnels, otherwise known as mini hoop houses. Basically you can use hoops that are made out of either metal or PVC pipes that are covered with spun bond fabric or plastic to cover the crops. Now I want to point out, when you are using row covers to overwinter your vegetables, please make sure that the um, Plants don't touch the row cover when it's wet and your temperatures are below freezing because you can damage the plant. I also recommend using a crossbar or a ridge pole on top to reinforce the hoops. You can have your hoops a little bit further away when you put that added support on the top. This is particularly important in the colder climates where you'll get some heavy snows. Um, this is what can happen whenever you don't have that support. Now before I show you how to put up a low tunnel, let's first talk about what materials you're going to need. For your hoops, you have several options. You can use a PVC pipe that is either a half inch or three quarter inch, or you can use a metal pipe or conduit. Now with the metal pipe, it does give you more strength, more structure, but you have to use a pipe bender, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more work to use metal. Or you can use nine gauge wire. This won't have as much strength as the, the conduit, but it works great for the smaller beds where you don't need that extra height. Now for securing the hoops to the bed, um, rebar, half inch rebar is a great option. It comes pre-cut in 18 inches or 24 inch lengths. We're using the 24 inch lengths in our bed because we're using Mel's Mix, uh, which is a softer um, soil mixture for the beds. So I want to go down extra far to get good, that hard clay soil that we have here uh, to secure my hoops. Or if you want a cheaper alternative, you can do the pipe straps that you screw into the side of the bed. You can either do it on the inside of the bed or the outside of the bed. It doesn't hold your hoops quite as securely, but it is a, a, a cheaper alternative. Now for the crossbar that goes on top of the hoops to secure them, um, you can either use a PVC pipe or metal pipe, or you can use wood. When I priced it out this year, the wood prices had gone up so much this year that actually wood was a little bit more than the PVC pipe. So I'm using PVC pipe. And then I secure the ridge pole or the crossbar with uh, zip ties so that it will hold it firmly. 
and then I use the end caps on the PVC pipe so that it doesn't poke a hole in the row cover. Now for covering the hoops, you have several choices here as well, depending on what your climate is. Um, if you're in the colder climate, you need more frost protection. Plastic is a great option. Either a four mil or a six mil agricultural grade plastic. If you go thinner than that, you run the risk of tearing a hole in the plastic and it won't last quite as long. Uh, the benefit of using plastic is you get great frost protection and you get the most light transmission, which is critical because as you go into winter solstice, what, December 21st, your days are going to start getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Now plants basically stop growing when they hit only 10 hours of sunlight per day. So it's absolutely important that you get as much light transmission as possible. Now, the downside of using plastic is you don't get the moisture. You know, if you get rain or snow, none of that gets through and air doesn't circulate. So um, if you're in a dry environment, you may want to water um, if you get some warm spells. And also with a warm spell, in a, um, a sunny winter day where the temperatures start getting up, you run the risk of steaming your plants, overheating underneath the plastic. So keep an eye on it and make sure that you ventilate so you don't cook your plants. The other option is fabric row cover. Uh, this is what we use on our beds. These are great for the more moderate climates. Um, it's a spun bond fabric or agricultural fleece. Um, it's lightweight, but it does let water through and you get good air circulation with this. You still have the risk of overheating during those warm, sunny winter days. Warmer, <laughs> warmer, sunny winter days. So make sure that you keep an eye on your garden then as well, because you need to just uh, ventilate it. Now the um, cloth fabric does come in different thicknesses that will give you different levels of frost protection, but the downside is it also reduces the light transmission. So the thicker the, the fabric, the better the frost protection, but the less light gets through. So it's kind of a, a juggling act on that based on what your needs are. I am including uh, some more information in the video description below if you'd like to learn a little bit more of that as well as some links that you can use if you'd like to order the fabric row covers yourself. Now you want to be able to easily access the plants in your low tunnel throughout the growing season when you're overwintering, whether it's to harvest or just to check on them to see how they're doing, any insects growing, which, oh, by the way, they will, um, or you just need to ventilate. You want it to be easy to open the tunnel and then secure it after you're done. There's different options available. You can either use a clip or a clamp. My favorite are these um, snap clamps. It's basically a half inch because I'm using half inch PVC. So it's a, a half inch clamp that just snaps over the PVC pipe holding the row cover secure. It's easy to put on and take off without tearing the fabric. Now I've used those um, office clips that you get from the office supply place, the little black clamps that have clips on the end. But what I found is, yeah, they do tear the, uh, the fabric. Now securing the bottom of your row cover is also important. Uh, my favorite is just simply using a rebar post or a T-bar post that you just lay across the bottom and that securely holds it in place. Uh, you can also use uh, old pieces of wood to hold it down. I would advise against using these anchor pins or staples to hold the row cover in place because that can literally, you get a high wind coming through and it will just shred your row cover. Now, when the nights are gonna get especially cold, um, you can actually add an extra layer of protection. You can actually add an extra layer of protection simply uh, with a milk jug or water jug filled with warm water. 
and place around your plants or you can use bricks or rocks that are um, the sun will heat them up during the day and then they'll give off heat during the night if you paint them black even better uh, I've actually used a second row cover at times where we're getting extremely cold weather that works quite well as as well them or you can simply just cut the bottom out of a, a milk jug and set that on top of the plant if the plant is small enough if you've got a larger plant go to the dollar store and buy one of those uh, clear storage bins and just put that on top that'll give you some some extra layer it's particularly good for the spinach and lettuce now I want to put some caveats out here I've given you different ways of extending your harvest and enabling you to overwinter your crops but your climate really determines how long and how well your plants will overwinter you need to make sure that you're choosing the cold hardy varieties to plant uh, look through your catalogs to make sure that you're getting the ones that are the hardiest to help get you through the um, the winter that will increase your chance of successfully overwintering your vegetables this is one of the beds that we're going to be covering it is a four foot by nine foot bed but i'm only going to be covering the first eight feet I have some warm weather crops that uh, I would like to get a little bit more time on these wonderful orange bell peppers as well as some um, cool weather crops that you can see are well on their way fully established growing quite well so I want to be able to cover this to keep my warm weather crops going a little bit longer and get the cool weather crops more protection throughout the winter so I have three seven foot PVC pipes I have six 24 inch rebar posts that are half inch in diameter these I'm going to be using to anchor my PVC pipes with and then I have the eight foot crossbar or ridge pole the end caps that I'm going to be using on my PVC pipe, my lovely snap clamps, and to cover the hoops, I'm using Agribon. Uh, this is a medium weight Agribon 30. I start by pounding the rebar posts in at a slight angle so it's easier for me to slip the PVC pipe onto the rebar post. Now the low tunnel will be eight feet and I want the hoops to be evenly spaced. So the bars will be placed four feet apart. You really don't wanna go much further than four or five feet if you have a PVC crossbar in areas with a lot of snow because it just won't be strong enough. Once the rebar posts have been placed, I pound them in at an angle, leaving about eight inches above the ground to make it easier for me to slip the PVC pipes over the rebar posts. To make the hoops, I simply slip the PVC pipe over the rebar posts and push it into the ground slightly. Now the height of the tunnel is gonna be dictated by the width of the row cover and the width of the bed. My row cover is 83 inches wide and the bed is four feet wide, so these hoops can be no taller than two feet in order to leave enough um, fabric on each side to secure the bottom of the row cover. Now, I don't recommend cutting the pipes any shorter than seven feet because the shorter they are, the harder they are going to be to bend. Instead, push the hoops down into the ground to get the height that you need. I place the crossbar on top of the hoops and add end caps to each end in order to protect the fabric. I use zip ties carefully to secure the crossbar to the hoop, each hoop, and using two zip ties in a crisscross pattern will hold it uh, more firmly and provide better support. Cut the row cover to the appropriate length, making sure you leave enough on each end so that you can seal off the ends of your tunnel. In this particular case, 
the hoops are two feet tall, so I'm going to leave three feet on each end. Now carefully place the row cover over the plants so that you do not damage them and tuck in any branches that are sticking out or leaves that are sticking out so that they don't freeze. Now secure the row cover to the hoops and pull the material tightly so that the wind won't whip it around or any snow will slide off. You want a nice snug fit. Now anchor the sides down with something heavy like rebar, old boards, or T-posts. Even bricks and stones work well. And then making sure that everything is pulled nice and snugly, then you can secure the ends of your uh, tunnel simply by gathering the fabric and anchoring it down. And here we go, the finished row cover. This will help keep my plants nice and toasty so I can overwinter my cool season crops and get a few more weeks of harvest out of the warm season crops. See, that's all there is to putting up a low tunnel. So easy and they're still flexible. I hope you learned a lot in this video today and perhaps are inspired to put up a low tunnel in your own garden. I know we really enjoy being able to harvest fresh vegetables all winter long. There's nothing else quite like garden to plate in 20 minutes or less. You just can't beat it. If you missed any of the other videos in this fall gardening series, uh, you can simply look in the description below to find links to any of those videos that you may have missed. Thank you. Bye-bye now.